Hey, Brad Clark here for Reading Dojo. This is going to be a quick um, kind of self-help guide to Rococo and retargeting in Blender. There have been a bunch of tutorials I've seen that, including the ones on the Rococo website, that just kind of misunderstand how to apply motion capture to a Rigify rig in Blender, or they're just overly complicated and or destructive to the creation of motion capture onto the Rigify rig. So. Hopefully this will help give you some tips and um, clear up some of the things I keep seeing people get confused about. I'm going to use some motion capture from this Rococo event where they gave away 25 Star Wars moves. And um, for deeper looks at retargeting in Blender and also just Rigify rigging, uh, I can recommend going to um, CG Dive. This covers Rigify in depth and is one of the best resources for free videos and paid courses about it. So I've learned a ton from, from Todor and really appreciate the amount of work he's put into creating these tutorials. So with that, let's jump over to Blender. And I have imported already this FBX file with a, a snowman character that's rigged up in Rigify. This is from a short film. So <clears throat> when we go to the Rococo plugin, um, for Blender, there's the retargeting tab, and there's a couple things that people get wrong right off the bat, which is um, understanding how to get both characters to retarget well without actually changing, like without going into edit mode and changing the core rig. So let's start with that. I'm going to go ahead and pick uh, the character reference, and uh, if we change this to source to make it clear. This is the source animation, and it's a long one, so I'm going to quickly turn this up here. We'll jump over to the dope sheet and frame up this animation. So I'm just going to grab it and scoot it down. The one thing I do want is the start pose. So I do want to come down here and I grab the T pose, and in pose mode, I'm going to go ahead and copy the pose. And then when I'll trim it, I'll paste it back over. So let's see. This is the action I want from the Star Wars clip where he raises his hands and does a force force maneuver. So I'm going to start it here, and I'm just going to grab all the data on this side. Um, shift control, left click, and delete. And now I can go ahead and drag this back over here towards the beginning. And I'm going to jump to frame zero and go ahead and paste the pose back on, turn on auto key, and paste. Okay, so now I have the character starting in T-pose and blending to the action, and then we'll just uh, retarget it for the first 200 frames or so. So I'll set the end frame to 220, and I will just trim off everything else after this. So now we have this T pose and the action that we want to retarget. The target is going to be my rig. And when we build bone list, this is the one of the other things that people have trouble with when they're trying to build a retarget system for Rigify. Rigify has a lot of bones. And if you look in the, the character outliner, you can see that there's MCH bones and some of the controls like um, shoulders are named differently and inconsistently with uh, like upper arm IKL <clears throat> chest. The controls don't have any kind of marking on them, so you, you pretty much just know that if it's a um, MCH or has some kind of prefix, those are not what you want inside the mapping. So um, I don't want the hips to move, I just want the upper body, so I'm going to get rid of hips. And you can see that there's a bunch of other things here that are tried to map, but here it, it started to get them. Um, but it mixed the IK hand with the FK controls. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just, we can clear this. Uh, you can hit the X to clear all of it, or you can just clear individual ones. And so the chest is going to be mapped to spine two, which is this control. And the other thing to note is that this retarget will do position and rotation. So if there's something you don't want to move during the retarget, um, and sometimes you don't because of the scale difference, uh, you can just lock the transform so it doesn't move 
if you're just trying to limit the rotation or edit it later. It's, I'll show you a quick way to fix this also. So we'll go to the Rococo plugin and I'll fix the upper arm is correct, shoulder L, forearm is correct, but we need hand FK L. So by default, my rig is set to IK, but I want animation baked to both systems. So we'll go down here and head neck or correct, shoulder FK. So the hand on this side got mapped correctly, but the other one didn't. So, um, but how do we manage the IK? Well, there's two ways to do this. You can either um, retarget to the FK and then use Rigify's bake or IKFK snap to get it over to uh, the IK rig. It's slow and you have to do it one at a time. You can set up constraints and that is not part of the retarget process. It's not part of Rigify, so that adds extra complications. So instead I'm gonna add custom entry and I'm gonna add, um, well, I'll add four because I want to control the shoulders, um, or sorry, the elbow and the, the wrist. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and go grab the hand. And so we'll map hand from the source again, left hand, and this time we'll go to IK hand L and hand right hand and IK hand uh, right. Now, this shoulder control is not very helpful when we're trying to match retargeting stuff, so I'm going to just sw switch this um, toggle the pull vector for the rig. And then we can go ahead and map the pull vector to the elbow. So now we can go back to the retarget and I can go, um, let's see, I think this is upper arm, arm, left arm or forearm. So forearm will be kind of the elbow of the character. So we'll go left forearm, forearm and then we'll grab the uh, upper arm, upper arm, IK, IK pull target left. Oops, not biz, we just want, now I can just grab the, uh, the name and paste it. And then we'll do right, Arm, right forearm, and then we will paste this and do R. Okay, so now these are going to snap to the elbow when we retarget. And auto key is still on, so <laughs> I should delete those because I don't want to mess with that. Okay, so that's the mapping part. Um, there's a small bug in exporting these mappings right now, at least for this version, and um, I talked to Rococo, they're fixing it, so we'll be able to export these out and save custom mapping. For now, I'm just going to, you can just save the file. So now that I've got this, um, I'm not going to use auto scale. I typically don't. I want to adjust it. But the main thing I want you to really pay attention to is this section right here. This is the next thing that everyone messes up. They leave it on rest pose, which means that this is a T pose and this is an A pose. And so um, whatever the difference is, is going to be an offset when you try to retarget. So when this arm comes down, um, the arm drops down here. Well, it's going to push the target arm that's in the A pose into the body. It's gonna take this offset and just shift it down. So you need this character to be in the same T pose, but it's not. So instead of editing the actual source file, which breaks animation compatibility, we're just going to um, lift up the arms on our character. So I can either uh, do this by hand with the IK target and adjust this, or I can, you know, adjust the FK system as well. And I'm not being very careful about this, but I could, I could do the FK and then snap the IK as well. But I just want a general um, straight line, which is good enough. Again, I just don't want a big offset when I retarget. Um, we're gonna have to fix it and clean it up anyway, but at least it will give um, us a consistent remapping. Okay, so now I have these ready and I'm gonna go ahead and just switch over to object mode and line them up. And make sure that I have the skeleton picked and go back to transform. And now I'm going to scale up the character. I scaled up a little more. Okay, so it's going to try to snap these controls and hand positions to where this character is. And then we'll have to clean it up, which is not actually too hard. So I'll show you um, with the animate plugin, it's actually much easier, but uh, we're still focused on retargeting for now. So. I have this scaled up and 
I have the TPO starting. Um, I probably don't need the TPOs, but I want the I want it to start with the TPOs just to be consistent. And uh, I have the mapping custom built for this character. And um, now I can go in and just retarget the animation. There's no animation, no action here. So if I run retarget, it's going to process, and then we'll end up with our results here in a second. Okay, so here, this is the end result, and this looks kind of messed up, as you would expect. Let me go ahead and turn on pose mode, and uh, I'll toggle the screen. So, because, it, as I said before, it's going to try to match the position of the stuff. Um, here's the animation, but it's not terrible. There's just um, some offsets that happen. So, the thing that I'm going to use animate for, which is really super awesome, is going to animate and turning on the animation offset, which basically means any change you make to the rig, it updates the animation graph curves. So instead of having to hand fix this, I'm simply just going to turn animate on and then in the, the, the start frame T pose, I'm going to go ahead and clear transform for the rig. So now when I go ahead and move this, He's back in his normal T pose, but the animation has been updated to kind of fit the character. There's still some issues with the hands penetrating, and that's just because we just pushed it to an A pose here. So um, if I show the rig and grab the arms still with the animation mode on, and um, actually I'm just going to lift this up by hand and rotate it kind of back into our matching T pose. That is offsetting all the animation for the entire time, as if we had used an animation layer. But I find the animation offset faster than doing animation layers and baking for these kind of fixes. And so we'll, we'll fix the arms again. And I could have saved um, a T-pose as a pose library to snap it back to that initial position as well. And then uh, you know we can, we can create some offsets for these as well. And so now when we, we move this through, we can see that the arms are now not penetrating, at least not as much, and we can do some editing here. Now, right now, I'm affecting the entire thing, so if we wanted to, we could use the animated filter to um, basically filter a selection of time. There's some really cool options to um, uh, filter out and only affect certain areas, but this is going to be good enough for today. We can now get this mocap retargeted and use it to block out shots with the Rigify rig and notice that I didn't have to bake to um, IK after. I can go in now and I can actually just blend between the two. So here's the FK source and here's the IK source because both of them baked. I can actually just go in and, and decide you know, which one I want to follow, which is really nice. I didn't have to use the bake action or snap afterwards because I could get it mapped over. And this is really helpful when you've got um, IK legs and the characters match closely together. So hopefully that helps clear up some of the things I keep seeing being done wrong in the Rigify retargeting process using Rococo and just some misunderstandings about like the features that this has. So make sure that you're using current pose, not rest, when you go to retarget because that will um, the current pose references exactly the T pose shape you made. So um, if you do the rest pose, like I said, it creates an offset that is uh, problematic. So start both characters off in T pose, set it to current, and then retarget. That way you get a better reaction, a uh, better mapping, and you haven't had to go into edit mode and actually change the, the rest pose of the character that maybe the mesh is bound that way or you have existing animations. Use animate as a quick post-process tool to help clean things up. So hopefully that helps you out and good, happy retargeting.